Hello, Erica from the Teacher Next Door team, back with a bonus video for you today. This is all about the Meet with the Teacher Reading Center. Now, I would like to thank the trainees who requested this additional video. It is so important to us at the Teacher Next Door to know exactly what you need, and we are happy to deliver. So hopefully this little insight into my Meet with the Teacher Reading Center helps inspire your small groups moving forward. So the first thing I will say is I do want to clarify that this small group instruction that I am delivering is separate than my RTI time. At my school, we personally have 30 minutes carved out of our schedule where we are all working on RTI at the exact same time. My tier three students get pulled out of my classroom during this time and I work with my tier two students in my classroom. My tier one students are given goals to work on independently during that time and we are monitoring those throughout the school year. So since this time is separate from RTI, these groups can be a little bit different. And what I'm gonna show you right now is specifically going to be tailored to our grade level instruction. Remember in RTI, you might not be working, if you teach fourth grade, you might not be working on fourth grade material in RTI. Actually, hopefully you're not because if you have students who are at a first grade, second grade, third grade level, hopefully you're delivering instruction at their grade level to get them up to where they need to be. But during this specific small group time, we are working on those fourth grade skills. Now, I will say this disclaimer, if I have a student who is extremely, extremely behind where we're behind, now I say that loosely because COVID really messed things up, right? Because I don't necessarily consider students behind. They really had an impact on their learning, so I don't necessarily want to call them behind their learning. If they are not at those grade level standards where they are expected to be, I am also delivering that support throughout these groups, and I may also deliver a additional small group instruction if they need that phonics and phonemic awareness support as well. So. That said, what I'm gonna show you right now is specifically going to be at grade level, but do know that if you need to scaffold this back, if you have a pretty big group of students who are below grade level, you can scaffold this back to go back a grade level or even two grade levels if you need to. The other thing I will say, Everything I'm going to show you is in the Teacher Next Door shop. You are more than welcome to recreate this exact process with the materials that you have available in your own classroom, materials that you've created that work for you yourself, but do know that what I'm going to be showing you are the materials that I use and they are available through the Teacher Next Door shop. So. The first thing we will get to is how in the world do I create the small groups and how do I figure out what those small groups are? So I personally work at a standards-based grading school, so I need to make sure that everything that I'm delivering is tailored to those standards because at the end of the trimester, I have to deliver a report on each of our reading standards that we worked on that specific trimester. So I was having a very, very difficult time figuring out where students were with each and every standard because most of our unit tests mixed up all of our skills and I was never getting a true and accurate representation of where students were with one standard when I was assessing several at a time. So because of that need, we, all, we worked on a plan to develop some assessments that would be more reflective of where students are at with a particular standard. And thus came these reading assessment bundles. So I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller down here in the corner. And you can see here, these are the reading assessment bundles. They have a, an assess, a group of assessments, I should say, for each and every single reading standard for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Now, the reason why there are there's more than one assessment per, per standard per grade level is because you don't just wanna assess once. You want to make sure that you're consistently formatively assessing students to make sure that you don't just get a grade that's just kind of a fluke. If a student aces an assessment and you're like, mm, I know better than that, we're going to try this again. We need to reassess because I think that they might need some support with this. You have the opportunity to assess once, twice, three times to get an accurate representation of where a student is with a particular skill. Now, I'm gonna change my screen over. I am personally on a Mac right now. If you are on a PC, this is just basically your My Computer folder, just like where your folders are stored on your computer. If you're familiar with Mac, this is Finder. So these are all of the files in the fourth grade standards-based reading assessment bundle. So the one I'm gonna show you right now is actually this free one, and you, I'll link this below for you so you can download this. This is my right there in making inferences, reading assessments. So in here, when you scroll down, let me make this a little bit smaller for you. When you scroll down, you've got your links. There are a ton of teacher's notes that I put together here for you on how to use these reading assessments in your classroom. We could have an entire training, not even just an entire module, an entire training on assessing students um, 
and I am happy to deliver that. I actually may have some plans to do that in the future if you're interested in it. Um, but in here, we have all of our digital assessments. So these are all Google Forms. They are self-grading, so there's nothing to grade here for you. Um, these are great to deliver to your students and get a quick snapshot of where they are. Something I will show you about these assessments here. Oh, and by the way, before I pass this up, there is also just a Google Slides version if you need a version to um, project on your whiteboard in your classroom, that's available to you. If you need a version to have on an iPad in front of a student who has some sort of specific accommodations in their 504 or IEP, that is available to you as well in this Google Slides. There are no questions attached to this. This is just the passage delivered in a technology-based format. So if you need to underline it, highlight it, um, record a reading of it, it is available to you as well. But let's look at the paper version because that's the easiest to take a peek at in PDF form right here. So this is a quick snapshot of one particular standard. Our goal with these reading assessments was to make them easily delivered to students. We are not looking to have them sit in front of an assessment for 40 minutes. We don't have time for that. It's torture for kids. We're not in the business of torturing them. So short, quick passage. Very short passage up here at the top. You can see here's your passage. And then at the bottom here, there are only five questions because this is a quick snapshot that I'm taking of my students. I do not have time to give a full assessment on Monday and a full assessment on Friday in my reading block. So these are quick. They take maybe at most 10 minutes, and that's an extreme. And I am giving these to students so I can take a quick look at where they are at with this particular reading standard. Now, again, there's version A of this. You can see that it's detailed down here. Here's version A. Now we've got version B. So if I need to assess again in the middle of the week, which I do, I will give version B. And then at the end of the week, I will give version C. If you don't like that method, you can also just, it's like I said earlier, if you have somebody who stands out where they like aced an assessment and you're like, mm, I'm not sure about that. Or if you have a student who totally bombed an assessment and you're like, I think that they know this skill, I'm gonna give them another try, I'm gonna give them form B this time and see how they do. You can track that data and you can make decisions based upon that data for the good of your own students. So obviously there are keys in here. So this is what I use to create my small groups. I will give the digital version of this. So when I get a version of this in Google, I'm sorry, Google Forms, it will spit out a Google Sheets. I know that's so confusing. So I give it in Google Forms, which is just like a survey basically. And then it gives me the results in Google Sheets. So it's basically Google's version of Excel. It tells me everyone's score, it just says name, score, name, score, name, score. So I will take that sheet and I will sort it from the lowest score to the highest score. And I will take my group who needs the most support and I will see them first that week. So if I have students who scored a zero on this assessment, I will take that group of students. Now in the past, I've had a group of 10 students who have scored a zero on these reading assessments. So I will take the first group of five and then the next group of five, and those will be my first two groups that I meet with throughout the week. So if I have a 45 minute block of reading centers in my classroom, I will meet with group one and group two and split that 45 minute reading, that reading centers block and split that time and meet with both groups to deliver personalized small group instruction because those kids need it most. Those kids who are scoring zeros or ones, they need you most. The kids who are scoring fives, you can kind of guide them on into their reading centers. They can practice this skill and you can even enrich them using these scores from these assessments right here. You can provide them with enrichment to really make sure you're differentiating your instruction in your classroom. Again, I needed a way to do this easily. I needed a way to look at a quick snapshot of data and decide how I was going to differentiate and not sit there and mull over my benchmark data that we only take three times a year because all of those standards are aggregated together in benchmark data. I don't have a true picture of where students are with each individual skill, but with these, I do. So again, I will link this free one for you in the, the little description box beneath this video. I will also link the full bundle for you underneath this video so you can take a look at them if you want to. Remember, you can recreate this process with the materials that you have in your own classroom as well. This is what I use to determine what my groups are. Now, I know some of you will ask this and I wanna answer this ahead of time too. Do I meet with those students who are above those two groups that I spoke about earlier? The groups who got, you know, maybe scored a zero or scored a one. Yes, I do, but I don't meet with them instantaneously off the bat. I push those groups until maybe 
Wednesday or Thursday of that week because they don't need that high, high focused instruction, really scaffolding this particular skill for them. I will meet with them later in the week and kind of touch base with them, work on them with the skill. Take a look at that data. I remember I am assessing on Monday and then I'll give the second assessment later on in the week on Wednesday just to make sure, okay, are we keeping consistency in our data? Are the students who scored a zero or a one, are they growing? Did they grow by Wednesday after I met with them? Did they show growth? And if they didn't, guess what? I'm meeting with them again. So hopefully our data trends are tracking upward. And if they're not, I know that I need to intervene. So let's talk about after I figure out who's in what group and when I'm meeting with them, what in the world do I do with them in this group? Let me show you that. All right, I am back in my finder. Again, if you're on a PC, this will be your my computer. But this is the folder for my digital reading bundle. Let me show you what these look like in the shop in case you need a visual of what the cover of this file looks like. Okay, that is this guy. Let me make myself a little bit smaller. I did show these in a previous video in the training. So if these look familiar, there's a reason for that. This was a look inside reading centers. I have shown these before. These are your digital reading bundles. There's a third grade, a fifth grade, and a fourth grade, obviously, as well down here. So again, these skills are all aligned to the standards. You will notice when I flip my screen back to my digital reading bundle, we've got inferences here. If I go back to my standards-based reading assessments, look at the first one right here. It's inferences. All of these skills that go in order 1 to 20 are the same skills that go in order from 1 to 20 in the digital reading bundle. So you've got your assessment and now you've got your small group work. So I'm going to open up my inferences folder right here because again, I just showed you the making inferences assessment. So if I were continuing to work on inferences that week, I would pull my inferences small group work out of my digital reading bundle right here. In here, you've got your answer key, which is listed first in here. You've got your editable PowerPoint version. So if you are a Microsoft school, this is your go-to right here. You've got your teacher's notes and your links. That's going to be where you're going to go first. And then you've got your terms of use. So I'm going to open up the teacher's notes and links in here, and you will see that you've got the links to the Google Slides right here, and you've got some more information about the digital reading unit. You will notice this, this PDF is only two pages long. That is because this entire file lives in Google Slides. Once you click the link up here, you will be able to make a copy of this in your Google Drive. So let me take you back there. Once we make the copy, it is going to look like this. And if this looks familiar, there's a reason for that. I showed you this in the previous video in the training. So in here, I've got all of my activities that align to my making inferences, plus additional comprehension activities that I can use throughout my reading centers. So with my very first small group, my students who scored a zero or a one on my reading assessment, I am meeting with them first immediately on Monday and I am delivering additional instruction on inferences in my small group. So I am fortunate enough to have devices in my classroom. My students all have iPads, but you can also print these just by going to file and print, which is down here. I'm behind it. Hold on, let me move myself over. File and print and then you will be able to print these on paper. I know I've had some students who are just anti-iPad. I myself am anti-iPad. Usually I much prefer paper. So I have printed these out while well, one person uses the piece of paper and then the student next to them will use their iPad. Super versatile, dependent upon what you need in your classroom. So we will read this passage together. It is a two pager right here. It is optimized for being used on a tablet. That's why the font is a little bit larger here. And then you will notice there's a vocabulary activity, a comprehension activity, and then there is the standards aligned activity. So this is the activity that I would work on in small group with my students. So we would look at the text clues in here and then we would drag the inference that we would be able to make using those text clues over to those boxes. If you are printing this out, the students can very easily just print in these boxes what these boxes say right here. So again, a tailored activity to the standard that we are working on. I want to show you this additional page that we would work on down here. So we are making inferences using character traits in this particular one, and we are dragging them up to kind, responsible, and lazy. So standards aligned, they are quick. You'll notice there's only six boxes here because we don't have a ton of time to work in small group. We're reading a passage and then we're answering some questions. I'm delivering that instruction and I'm splitting that time. If I have a 45 minute block of reading centers, I'm splitting that time between Two, I'm so sorry, excuse me, <laughs> between two groups of students. So quick and fast 
little small group centers here so I can deliver that instruction and the best part about this bundle is that I if I have a technology center in my reading centers when I'm done working with students they've already been assigned this and now they have two additional activities that they can work on independently and I can check later because they have this vocabulary activity that they can work on and then they also have this comprehension activity that they can work on and as you know students who are receiving small group scaffolded instruction in your classroom likely need support with more than just the skill that you are working on that week these comprehension activities and vocabulary activities wind up being very beneficial for those students who really need a lot of tailored instruction. So that is what I'm working on with all of my groups in my small group instruction, except for my group that may have scored like your highest group in your classroom who are consistently scoring fives on those reading assessments, who you know need instruction that is higher than the grade level that you are on. You can also pull from the digital reading bundle for fifth grade. Again, this is fourth grade. You can pull from the bundle that's ahead of your grade level to kind of push them and challenge them. Or you can pull enrichment activities that fit your students needs. Because as we know, those students who are really acing everything at grade level may have some really diverse needs that you can enrich along the way. So this is my small group instruction. And another thing that I'm going to show you is what students are going to be able to do after this. So because this is standards online and this is inferences, what I would use next after my students leave me and they're done with these, so they have two additional activities that are comprehension and vocabulary based here, but what if they need more practice with the skill that we're on? What if they need more practice with the inferencing skill that we're working on right now? That is when I send them off to their reading centers to go work independently because I'm now working with a separate group that's separate from them, but I still want them to focus on that particular skill that is when I assign them the reading center here. So if you remember from our training, we've got the reading center bundle here. There's a fourth and fifth grade bundle, and then there is also a third grade bundle. I'm gonna swoop on over to my reading center folder here, and I'm going to find my making inferences center right here. I'm gonna open up that folder, and you're gonna see a ton of files. I'm gonna go through what these files are really quickly. I know I've done this in a previous video, but it can be overwhelming with this much information. So these first four sets that I'm highlighting in blue here, these are all my interactive PDF type centers. These are the ones that are clickable or touchable if you have tablets, the ones that are delivering instantaneous feedback to students, super important for students who have just practiced a skill with you to continue receiving feedback outside of working with you. So instantaneous feedback with these four students. In addition to the interactive PDF versions, you have your inferences printable game here. So this is the game board and then also the task cards that belong with it, as well as the Google Forms version. So a self-grading version of the Reading Center here. So three formats of this exact same center. You can choose what fits your classroom best. If needs ever change, should we have to go back to virtual learning from home? You've got flexibility in these and you can change up the format that you're delivering this center in. Let me open up the PDF and show you what that looks like. So we've got a printable game here where it is two puzzle pieces that fit together the story and paired with the inference the instantaneous feedback interactive PDFs here also have the puzzle pieces on them for you as well and then if you scroll down we've got tons of teacher notes so if you ever need to remember how to use those those are available to you here we've got the self grading Google Forms links you just click on these to make a copy of those Again, instantaneous feedback, also collecting data if you need that. And then down here, you've got your recording sheet, you've got your puzzle pieces here. Students can keep track of which matches they've made here. So tons of options here for you. I wanna show you those interactive PDFs real quick too, so you can see what they look like. So I'm gonna open up set one here and take a look at that. Again, directions on the page for you. This is all on students' devices or a computer if you have it in the classroom. You click start game. The student reads the small passage. Again, we are not in the business of making a student sit there and read a huge long passage to make one inference. Small passage here in the corner. And then when the student clicks on the answer here, what is the event here? they get instantaneous feedback. So the random one that I just chose there was the correct answer. It takes them to the next question. I'm gonna choose this one. Oops, that was not the correct answer. Instantaneous feedback. Those students leave me from my rating center and now they're instantaneously practicing making inferences on their own independently as well. 
Very, very important reading center. One thing I will say, this is a PDF. If you play any game in your classroom, any board game, any uh, Foursquare outside recess, um, the natural uh, inclination of children is to uh, win the game, right? And if some students want to win a game, they will resort to cheating. So I'm gonna give you a heads up, an upper elementary heads up right now, this is a PDF. So students can do this. They can scroll, absolutely. When I am setting expectations with students all about what's expected of them in reading centers, why we are working in reading centers, we are focusing on that growth mindset. We're talking about how we're gonna apply ourselves. And as we keep learning and as we keep practicing and keep persevering through problems, that is when our brains are going to grow. That's when our brains are going to build more neural networks. That's when learning is going to take place. If we are scrolling through this, if we are cheating at Foursquare, if we are looking at someone's test, any example of being dishonest, that's not going to help us for our growth mindset. It's not going to help us for our learning. It may be tempting. It may be something that we're inclined to do when we're in third, fourth, or fifth grade, but it is not going to help. So you do, I will give you a heads up, you are going to have to use some growth mindset here, some setting expectations for students so they stay focused on the task at hand and stay learn, stay continued on the learning process. And remember, the important thing about this is that this is a low stakes environment. There is no winning reading centers. <laughs> We're not winning reading, that nothing's gonna happen if you win reading centers. This is to make sure that your brain is growing in these reading centers. So later on, when I check in with you and I see, hey, where are we at with inferences right now? You can show that growth later on. So just a heads up to you of how to talk to students about growth mindset and staying focused and on task and being honest with our learning. Because as we all know, as upper elementary teachers, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you the Teacher Next Door site one more time. All of the resources that I've shown you right now are all listed beneath this video in the description box for you if you need them. Again, you can recreate this in your own classroom using the materials that you have on hand or materials that you yourself have created. But in the shop, we've got number one here. I closed this one. We've got number one reading assessment bundle. That was the first one that I showed you where I take a quick snapshot of where students are with each individual standard. In our small group instruction, when students are meeting with me, that is when I use the digital reading bundle. I'm pulling that specific standard out of there and delivering that instruction to students, plus the additional activities are in there, the comprehension ones and the vocabulary activities. And then after that, to continue practicing the skill that we are working on, we've got our reading centers here. So all three of those resources work in tandem with one another, their standards aligned, they are focused, and they're done for you. So. These all came out of a need of knowing that teachers did not have these resources in their classroom, and that is why they were created. If you have any questions regarding anything that you've seen today, please shoot us back an email. If you've got one of those emails from the training in your inbox, just hit reply. That'll come to us and we can get back to you, or you can reach out to us. The best way would be to probably send us a DM on Instagram, and I will be able to answer any of your questions there as well. Hopefully this video was helpful, and please let me know if you have any requests or questions moving forward.